So starting with number five, it's reversing items. Now, by default, if you want to reverse an item in Reaper, there are a few ways of doing it. Either double click on an item to open media item properties, or you can also press F2. And here you have a little checkbox down here called reverse, and you can hit it and hit apply, but you'll see a problem right away. Before, after. Well, the issue is the thing that I'm trying to reverse is part of a larger file. I mean, one way around that is to glue the item first. And then when I hit reverse, it goes this way. But this takes a little bit too long. And I don't even want to open this window. I just want to very quickly reverse an item. So the next native Reaper option is this action called item reverse items to new take. So with this item selected, if I run this action, it will render our item in reverse to a new take. And this is fine. This works. But usually if what I find that I do after this is all Alt, Shift, and T, and that is this action, crop to active take. This is what I do, or I can also glue this item and now I have a new item. So in order to save time, I made a very simple custom action. It's called custom reverse item. And I have set that to command shift and R for reverse. So that makes sense. And if we look at the action, it's very simple. Item, reverse items to new take, take, crop to active, take in items. So with this item selected, I just hit the hotkey, ship laps, and Bob's your uncle. Doesn't require any extra menus. At number four, we got audition item. Let's go over an example of this. So by default in Reaper, shift and E is assigned to item show effects chain for item take. And that works very simply. If I have an item selected, I can hit shift and E and this will open the item effects window as well as your effects browser. So if you want to put stuff on there, you put stuff on there. However, again, something that I find I would do often when I'm using item effects is, well, I want to hear and loop this item. So, okay, I can shift and double click on it to set a time selection. And usually I would want to solo that track as well. Because again, usually when we're adding effects to items, we're doing something quite surgical or whatever it is that we're doing, we probably want to really see what's going on. So then I hit solo and then obviously I got to hit play as well. I've made a custom action for this. It's called audition item. So the first few actions are just there to set this up. First, if I have any effects chain windows open, I want them to be closed. Next, if I have a time selection, I want that to be removed. And if I have any tracks soloed already, I want them to be unsoloed. Obviously these won't do anything if none of this stuff is in my project. So now that the action is ready to be run, this is what happens. Set time selection to selected items like this. Set transport repeat state. So this will basically toggle repeat on if it's off and if it's on, it won't do anything. Next is toggle solo for selected track. So this track is selected and this will toggle it solo. Go to start of time selection. So that will go to the start of time selection. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. And then item show effects chain for item take. That's what shift E used to do. Open your effects window and also open your effects browser. So then I can just grab stuff from here to here. Easy peasy. And finally, it will just play it. So that's super easy. I'm going through my project. I realize this item needs a little bit of attention. So I go shift E and all that stuff happens automatically. So maybe I want to put an EQ on here so I can go shablamos and there's my EQ. Um, 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 all right. And number three, we got ripple delete items. And this is actually two separate actions that basically do what ripple editing does without us needing to switch to ripple editing. So let me give you an example of how that works. So I have a podcast edit here and basically I have to go through, take out all the silences and take out all the ums and ahs. But also sometimes I would just need to delete entire scenes from this, you know, to, to cut for time and stuff like that. So let's say I went through and I I decided to get rid of a few of these scenes. So what I can do is obviously we'll set to set it to ripple editing and then I can delete this item, delete this item, etc. However, for me, sometimes it's way faster if I don't go to ripple editing. So instead, what I can do is just hover my mouse over here and hit F1. And as you can see, without me being in ripple editing, this will delete the item and then it will move later items back to its place. And as a bonus, I don't even need to click. I just hover my mouse over it and they're gone. I have set this to F1 because that is also the same hotkey as ripple delete and DaVinci. So again, it's a very simple action. It sets ripple editing to per track, selects the item under mouse cursor. So if my mouse is here, I'll select this item. Then it will remove the item while in ripple editing and then it will set ripple editing back off to see it one more time in action. Ship lacks, ship lamps, schwap. 
Now I have a duplicate of the same action called ripple all delete item. This one is identical to the last action, except that instead of setting ripple editing to per track, it sets it to all tracks. My hotkey for that is option and F1. With my mouse here, if I hit F1, that'll delete this item moving this tracks items. If I do option and F1, it'll be ripple editing all. So it'll bring everything back. In number two, we have bring together and crossfade. Reaper actually has recently introduced a feature that makes this custom action somewhat obsolete, but not really, at least not for my workflow. So let's say I want to strip silence out of this podcast recording. So what I can do is I can go to my dynamic split. And basically once you dial in your values, Reaper will just show you in gray all the places where it's gonna trim the silence. And this wasn't a feature before, but Reaper has recently, I think in 622 or something implemented this, where if I hit split with my ripple editing enabled, it'll trim the silence out of those files and then bring all these files back together, which is really useful and a big time saver. So it used to be that it would just give you a bunch of items like this. Now, I also usually don't rely on dynamic split for a lot of things that are not at like a constant level of loudness. Dynamic split is just too much of a pain to set up. It's much easier to do editing by hand, which is what I usually do. And as a bonus, also things like ums and uhs, Dynamic split is not intelligent enough to deal with those. So I just kind of like play the item through. As the item is going, I'm just deleting everything that I need to out of them. So after that, I'm left with a bunch of fragments of items. To bring these together, I have a custom action called bring together and crossfade. So I hit it, and as you can see, it has brought together all those fragments into one continuous group of clips. So let's look at this one. This custom action actually makes use of an Archie script, which you need to have, and that is Archie item move selected items to each other. So all the different fragments come together. And then this action is very useful, SWS crossfade adjacent selected items, move edges of adjacent items. So other than bringing these fragments together, it'll just slightly push them into each other so that they're all also crossfaded. And that really saves me an insane amount of time. I wouldn't need to use dynamic split. I wouldn't need to be in ripple editing. And the reason I don't use ripple editing while editing like podcasts and stuff is that every time I split an item and move it, it'll move all the items back. So if my playhead is going, this keeps happening. Next transients and items like this. Now by default, what you can do is you can do the way to go to next trans because it's moving our items while I'm playing back it'll constantly just jump. And then I have to stop the audio, go back to where I was and start again. So this is just a pain in the ass for me. I would rather just play the file. And as the file is playing in real time, I'm kind of trailing behind and I'm doing my editing. This works for me. And of course, in the next video, we're gonna do a deep dive into editing. Unselect, unsolo, unloop, unfloat. Unselect, unsolo, unloop, unfloat. And finally, number one is a very simple but quite effective custom action I have, which I have uncreatively called unselect, unsolo, unloop, unfloat. Float. This action has many, many uses. And as you can see, I have set its scope to global plus text fields. This is something I've explained in another video. So link to that will go up there. But a prime example of this is what we talked about earlier. When I press shift E, it soloed my item. It set a time selection to it and looped it and open its effects window. So if I want to get out of this mess, I can just hit control and escape and I'm back to normal. And this action again, very simple, remove time selection, unsolo all track, unselect all tracks, items, envelope points, whatever, and close all floating effects windows. So this just in one fell swoop gets rid of everything. So I have a bunch of tracks selected, a time selection, and some things are soloed, ship laps, they're all gone. Very simple, very effective and time saving. So that was my top five custom actions for faster editing. Let me know if you like top five lists or I guess YouTube will tell me and I'll do more of these. The reason I did this one is as a little bit of a primer for my next video in which I will talk about my overall audio editing workflow. I've gone and changed a lot of things from Reaper's defaults to make this workflow possible. It just works really well for me. So I wanted to show you that and I did. I want to stop off every few minutes and show you my custom actions. So hopefully if you watch this, you'll know what those custom actions are. And if you don't, in the other video, I'd be able to point to it. So that's it for today. You can find all these actions from my Reaper stash or in the blog, along with more instructions. And if you like the work I do, please donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link of that will be in the description. Thanks to all our previous donors. Join our Discord server. The link of that will be in the description too. And I'll see you very soon. Bye.